Uh, greetings, uh, friends, and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, where we attempt to present a topic each week that can actually be incorporated and have some use in your life. I'm Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... I'm Ashley. I'm a PE student from Duquesne. And on my right? I'm Kelsey. I'm a PA student from the University of Mount Union. Right. So I was going to talk about both of your diaries today. However, we're going to approach some other subject today. Uh, we always like to start off with a little, uh, little lightness. Uh, however, we're going to turn to a uh, subject that's uh, certainly been in the news lately. So recently... Uh, the students here at Seclair and uh, myself, we, we've been exploring other other faiths and other points of view in life, have we not? Mm -hmm. So where did we where did we go last Friday? We went to Sisters of Charity, and we also went to um, an Islamic mosque. So, Kelsey, would some people view that as two opposites? Yes. We go to. We go to a Catholic Mass in the morning and visit with uh, Sisters of Charity who've led a lifetime of devoted service. Then in the afternoon, we attend a service of, of Islam. Mm -hmm. We attend a, uh, a Muslim service. So tell me a little bit about how what differences you found. Um, can I start with similarities? I'd prefer that. Okay. <laughs> Um, everybody was extremely welcoming in both places, which was nice, but there are a lot of similarities between the two religions that I had never known. Such as? Such as core, core beliefs or beliefs of c certain things that happen. Um, Indeed. And both, both what the Sisters of Charity and what uh, the Monsignor was talking about, where they were all talking about compassion. Mm -hmm. And when they talked about the five tenets or the five pillars of Islam, uh, who could argue with those? Do you remember what some of those tenets were? I remember that one is killing of innocent people is never okay. Killing of innocent people is never okay. So part of the tenets are that, that we pray, so that you pray mm -hmm. every day. And that's a reminder for your connection with the divine or, or the all. And there is also a tenant for giving a certain percentage of your, your money to the poor. Mm -hmm. Giving your money to the poor. Well, you know, when, when they talk about all those things, and when, the, when the, our friends from Islam talk about uh, the responsibility that they have toward the downtrodden and the oppressed, that uh, brings me back to, in the Christian Bible, when they talk about the, Jesus, he speaks 184 times in the New Testament about the responsibility to help uh, the poor and the downtrodden trodden, the impressed, the, the falsely imprisoned, uh, the misunderstood. Do you, do you think he meant it? Yes. 184 times. Do you think he might or do you think he might have he meant might have. that? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to talk a little bit about, what I want to talk a little bit about today is basically what you found out, Kelsey, was there's a whole lot more in common than there is then there is differences. Absolutely. Sure. So, however, given uh, it's not just today's climate or the things that are going on today, this has been going on since the beginning of time. So, what do you think, uh, Ashley, is the basic reason why there's so much fear and misunderstanding and, and resentment between, let's even religions, cultures, ethnicities? Um, I think the media perpetuates a lot of it because I think they give an inaccurate portrayal of a lot of the different religious beliefs, especially the um, Islamic culture. They're leading people to believe one thing that's completely false, and it just creates a snowball effect, I think. So, so what we're talking about is misunderstanding. Yes. What we're talking about is, is misunderstanding. So what happens is when we get bombarded with sights and sounds and images, are any of them good? No. No. So what we begin to do, we begin to develop a narrative inside our head, do we not? We already we plan our own preconceptions, mm -hmm. and when we develop this narrative inside our head, it's very difficult, very difficult to dispel that. So, uh, have you ever have you ever seen a uh, a one year old or a six month old? Mm -hmm. Have you? Mm -hmm. Do you think those children are born with bias and prejudice and hate? No. Mm -hmm. You think a two year old knows how to hate? Um, I think it's learned behavior over time. Absolutely, but... absolutely. So, and who's responsible for mainly teaching these people these values? 
society, but particularly they're going to be around their parents or whoever's raising them right. most often. So in our neck, in our term, what we would call that is generational transmission. Okay. When we transmit, transmit, transmit. And if you're told a lie loud enough and long enough, sooner or later you'll begin to believe it. And you develop this internal narrative inside your head, which is what we try to do here at Seclair, where we treat people we don't treat diagnoses, is try to have them step back and become the observer behind behind that thinker, okay? Uh, one of Dr. Chaudhry's uh, most, fam most famous poets in in Islamic culture is Rumi. I don't know if you've ever heard of Rumi or not, I suggest you look him up. And he he said our minds are like uh, camel drivers and we're the camels. Okay? And what we're doing is we're being driven under its under its determined horrific control. Okay? So if we think of that, when we think of ourselves the thinker, so really and truly how could we how could we as citizens of the world and citizens of the earth uh, combat these nasty horrible things that go on in the world, the prejudice and the and discrimination? How could we do that? You kind of have to be the change. You can be the change. So what did uh, what did Gandhi say? Does anyone know? Be the change that you want in the world? Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, that you're going to go over to a foreign country and perhaps talk somebody out of doing these horrible things? No. Do you think, do you, think you could feed every starving child in, uh, in Africa? And sometimes what we do is we get so overwhelmed by the enormity of of the issues that we can't see what's right in front of us. Mm -hmm. That a small kindness to a friend, opening the door for someone, perhaps when you see someone being persecuted. Uh, we heard a, a sad story there of a of an Islamic woman that was watching a child in a basketball game. And they had their head covering on, which is okay. I don't think anybody was screaming at the men who had baseball caps on. So they were. What were they saying to that woman, calling her? They were calling her terrorists. Right. So what could you have done about that? Could you have told those people to shut up? Would you have wanted to fight them? Would that have worked? So what could we have done? Could you have gone and sat beside her? Yes. And shown her that there is an ally in her court. Mm -hmm. A random act of kindness. Just going to sit beside her mm -hmm. to show someone your support. Where the, the, the people who already have these preconceived notions, it's very difficult to show them. And sometimes when the, the oppressed, so what happens when people are oppressed for so long by others? Do they begin to uh, identify with those captors? Do they think they're right? Or do they, what, what do they begin to develop? It's like Stockholm Syndrome. Well, they can get the Stockholm Syndrome where they identify with uh, their captors. There can also be a lot of hatred. Yeah. Hatred. And, and misunderstandings. And what does what does hatred and misunderstandings lead to? Violence. Violence. So what what can we do? What can we do to uh, to combat violence? Uh, so what can we do? We we what we try to do is make people thirsty, thirsty for understanding and thirsty for negotiation. Okay. Uh, I know that throughout history, the answer to uh, these let's say evil doers, evil people, was to try to kill them all. Has that worked? No. 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 So do you think perhaps some understanding uh, are, are what we would call the forces of good? Are we always right? Are we always right? Yes. No. No, of course not. So what we're trying to do is find some, find some common ground. Mm -hmm. Find some common ground. And we can all out there every day start that and every single day by showing us showing a simple kindness for another when when Martin Luther King said this is that if you don't if you don't stand up the discrimination if you don't stand up against uh, bias then you're participating in it okay so rather than walk away from it uh, we don't necessarily need to confront and have a screaming match with somebody but we can certainly go we can certainly support those those people who are being discriminated and being uh, being, being marginalized, can we not? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's my that's my assignment for everyone out there today is to show a kindness for another. 
uh, if, if, if you feel that the world's filled with darkness and, there, and there's no place to go, then the only place you can do is shine a light as darkness cannot stand in the light. So my, my commitment to everyone out there is to recharge your batteries, recharge your batteries through some meditation, recharge your batteries through some connection with the divine, and get your flashlight going, shine that light. Any final comments? No, I think so. Any comments? No. Nope. Good, good. Okay, so again, as always, we give a uh, final free prescription. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask everyone to fish without bait. A lifetime without definitive expectations. Let's not, let's, when we shoot right for the dark, we don't always have to hit the bullseye. Let's aim. Let's say. Until then, it's so nice to be with you. Do a kindness for another. Thank you so much.